Good morning, beautiful people. Welcome back to another video here on the V2B Farm channel. It's been a very long time, but we are finally back with making new videos. And as you guys can see, this is not my place. I'm actually at my buddy's place. But today we're going to be doing so much more. We actually have made so many more improvements on the property here with the new chickens. We've added more chickens, but it's currently almost seven o'clock. So we're gonna be having breakfast right now. And after that, we're gonna be doing some morning chores. So let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, breakfast has been served. For today, we're just having a nice bagel. Yeah, with salt and pepper. This guy doesn't believe that uh, seasoning actually helps you, but I truly believe in seasoning, right? Right, Daniel? Sure, buddy. Wow, well, how dare you. So it's seven o'clock right now, and it's gonna be time to milk. It's pretty easy for us, since we don't have a dairy cow. Just go into the fridge, and booyah, there we go. I've got some fresh milk. I thought that would be funny. All right, so I just finished breakfast. It was actually pretty good. Now we're getting ready to go outside. It's pretty cold at the moment. I think it's only like uh, four degrees or so. But it's a very, very beautiful morning with the sun. We've got the chickens right here. They're pretty excited to go out. But basically what this is, so we're gonna put that inside of the run area. And then we're gonna put the feed and everything inside of here. So basically what happens, we corral kind of like the chickens into this place and then we're able to move the coop onto fresh pasture, which is going to be exciting. So let's go. Alright, so we've got them all inside of this. <laughs> Be quiet, man. We've got them all inside of this coop, except for this boy. <laughs> What's good, little guy? Whoa, whoa, whoa! Yo, he's going crazy. He's going crazy. So, uh, I guess we'll have him for dinner, butcher time. <laughs> Could you explain to the people here what this type of fencing is and uh, how it kind of works? So, this is uh, from year one electric fencing. It's AC current, so it kind of shoots out on like pulses. It's not a direct current, so it's not like continuous flow of electricity, it's like short bursts of electricity. You're supposed to have uh, posts in the ground the corners to pull to have equal tension to make it nice and tight. True. But, you know, you don't need to do that. That's if you really care about the aesthetics of it all, but it's fine like this, man. Huh? It is, man. No, it's actually been pretty useful, both for like keeping the chickens in and predators out. My dog, he tried to bite his way through and then he just started really? yelping, yeah. Yeah, that's what you get, Schubert. Guess who came out? Chicha. This is the barn cat, bro. So that's the type of fencing that later on I want to put into my farm. I know Justin Rose, he uses the one spike, which is a lot lighter to move. It's much easier if I'm here so that both of us actually are able to move it together. Because if you're doing it alone, it gets very heavy once you compact everything all on one arm. So Daniel has a suitable lawnmower, I guess you could call it, um, or a small tractor. So we're going to be using that and we've got a trailer right here as well, which is going to be super handy, especially moving the chicken coop because it is pretty heavy. We did design it in a way where we were going to add wheels and then have kind of like the chick saw like Justin Rhodes has and then have the like bar and handles and stuff like that, which it is still pretty light for the size that we have it, but it's much, much easier moving it with this bad boy right here so as you guys can see the blades are back on last weekend they actually weren't and then this is a trailer that we're going to be hooking it up onto and inside of here we'll put the chicken wire we will also put the feed and the water 
So we'll just move everything all at once and refill the water and refill the feed. It's still pretty good. So let's get this bad boy going. So while I was getting the tractor ready, Daniel already unhooked the first part of the fence. There's actually two fences, which allows us to go even longer and make the run, I guess you could say, much longer and bigger. So this is what it looks like when it's all folded up and stuff. It looks pretty neat. You have to make sure that this doesn't get tangled because otherwise it's a big mess and it will probably screw up your entire fencing, right Daniel? There you go. As you guys saw, that's basically how it works. It's pretty heavy, I'm not gonna lie, my arm's kinda tired right now, but that's okay. You know, a little workout session in the morning, it's always nice and good. Yeah, now we're probably just gonna move them way back down there. Be, be quiet, man. <laughs> Daniel actually has two roosters, so as you guys can see, he's got the brown one over there. And then there's this one right here, which is actually the leader. He's like the main rooster. This guy is kind of like a psycho. He just jumps on every type of chicken and doesn't do it the right way. Like he, he actually hurts them. But it's so cool because then the white rooster comes along and kind of like scares this guy off. Which is pretty cool. So I don't know if you guys can see it now, but they love digging themselves in the dirt, making like these small uh, baths, I guess you could say. The way they get cleaned is by taking dust baths, which is very good for their feathers and for their skin as well just for their health in general so that's why they love going underneath these trees it's looking so beautiful today man it's so nice and then we've got this big field that's not owned by daniel but his grandparents used to own it but this would be so nice to have like cattle or sheep <laughs> Alright, so we finally made it. Time to get these boys out of here. It's pretty difficult. Just one hand. But there you go. So basically, we're gonna keep going down that way. If you guys can see that fat one right there, that's probably gonna be the end zone. Pretty sure we'll be able to do it. And that's basically how it works. I'm gonna be doing this pile, but Daniel already started so. We lay down flat and then we just keep going down and then afterwards we come back and we poke the ends inside of the ground so that it's nice and straight. But as you guys can see, Daniel's struggling a bit. He's a rookie farmer. You know what I mean? No, I'm joking. It's all good, bro. So I'm going to put you guys down. It's probably going to be quite a, a long time lapse or something like that. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do this, but yeah. Right now I'm just going to go all the way down and stretch everything and then we're going to make sure that everything's nice and tight, nice and straight and then we'll be able to move the chickens back into their new run. So let's go. Broken and fallen, damned old souls been sent to burn. And 
this, ladies and gentlemen, is the aftermath of chickens on pasture. There's so much manure, so many feathers, as you guys can see. And there they are. It's time to butcher boys. <laughs> I'm just joking, man. Calm down. Ladies and gentlemen, the package has arrived. Look at that. They're all very happy. Now the only thing we still have to do is get their food and water bring it here but pretty soon guys you'll see that they're gonna start scratching and digging holes and getting their dust baths ready all right so we've got the trailer loaded ready to go so you guys can see two feed barrels two water barrels and then we've got these razors which allow basically allow the chickens like we put the feed and the water on top well mainly the feed just so that the chickens don't scratch everything out and make a whole mess because otherwise we're wasting a lot of feed So right here, this is where the feed barrel is. As you guys can see, it's still pretty full. Um, so we're gonna fill these all the way up. Usually we just fill them about halfway and then we refill them uh, whenever it's needed. But today we're just gonna fill everything fully up so that there's less work to do. And it's easier for Daniel during the week. Just so you guys know, I don't live here full time. I try to come as often as I can just to get the farming experience and you know, do the chores. It's so much fun, man. And as you guys know, like at my place in the city, we don't have enough room for chickens or any other animals. We did get one type of animal. So hope you guys are excited for that. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't. All right, boys, so everything's ready to go. So you guys can see, fully loaded. Same with the water, Daniel cleaned it and filled it up all the way. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. They're munching away. So we've got the waters over there. The reason why we put it there is because if they spill, it spills on the grass, doesn't make a whole mud uh, disaster. But I don't know what these guys are doing, but sorry for the background, there's a cargo train passing by. That's the only thing that kind of sucks about this place is that we are pretty close to a Railroad. These cargo trains are pretty annoying, man, because they're super long and they make so much noise, but that's that's not what matters. These beautiful chickens do. 